So in this lesson, we're gonna talk about filtering. Now this is a big conversation, but let's go ahead and tackle it. Let's face it, with Wireshark, we see a lot of different packets, but how can we filter down on the ones that really matter? Let's go ahead and get into it. So in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about filtering. Now, if you like this content, go ahead and let me know. Smash the like button, click subscribe, and make sure to hit that notification bell. So first, I'd like to talk to you guys about what the difference is between a capture filter and a display filter. Those are the two major types of filters that there are in Wireshark. So first, let's take a look at what a capture filter is. Let's just imagine here's our network. Okay, here's our connection. Uh, this could be a span connection directly off a switch, whatever it is. However, we're bringing data into our point of analysis. Okay, so first we hit our NIC card. All right, so whatever network interface card we're using. And then this is where we can do something called a capture filter. So what this does is this is where we say a specific protocol or a conversation to and from an end device. Uh, let's just say, for example, we're going to filter on just DNS traffic. All right, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in Wireshark. Okay, so I only want DNS coming in. Then that goes to my capture buffer. So in that buffer, I will now only have DNS traffic. Then I can open that traffic in Wireshark. From there, then once I have it in Wireshark, I can then further filter to maybe a specific DNS server or a specific name that I'm looking for to resolve. So that would then be a display filter. So if we're talking about pre-filtering, only capturing a certain type of traffic, that's a capture filter. If we're looking at post-filtering, filtering for packets that we've already captured, that's a display filter. So it's important that we know the difference between the two. But let's go ahead and see how we can do this in Wireshark. All right, so here I am. I just opened up Wireshark and I'm just in that intro screen where I can see the different interfaces and this is where I can put a capture filter if I choose. So remember, we were talking about just capturing DNS. But here we have to be specific with the syntax that we use. I can't just type in DNS. If you notice, that's red. It doesn't recognize it. Now, the language that we use for capture filters is different than the one we use for display filters. So while this would be a perfect display filter, maybe we've had to set this before within Wireshark, it doesn't work as a capture filter. Capture filters are a whole lot more simple. In fact, if you just start to experiment, I could capture for IP. How about ARP? Uh, in this case, I want to filter for port 53. That would be a DNS filter. So it's gonna look for UDP port 53. I could also do another simple filter like TCP, or if I wanted a specific user IP address, I could do host, and then Wireshark's trying to help me out. Do you want a uh, 192.0.2.1, so that would be a v4 address, do you want a v6 address, uh, what are you looking to do? So it does give you suggestions as you start typing, but as you're gonna notice, these are much simpler filters than you would set as a display filter, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, personally, I'd like to recommend against setting too fine a filter when it comes to capture filters. And the reason for that is that we don't wanna miss an incident. Let's say that I just filtered for TCP, but what if during that TCP conversation, there was packet loss and the network was letting me know about it using ICMP? What if I was getting ICMP messages saying, hey, Chris, this is where the problem's happening? Well, I wouldn't even see those because my filter, my capture filter, was too specific. So you wanna be very careful when you're using capture filters. Don't over set those captures because it could be in our interest of simplifying our traces, we miss the event because we were too specific. Okay, so let's go ahead and run a simple open capture. Okay, now we're bringing in some traffic into our analyzer. Okay, now I just grabbed a few packets off my network just to have something to filter for. And as you can see, I got ARPs, I got ICMP v6, I got DHCP, MDNS, some TLS. So there's some things that we can set a filter for. Now, as no doubt you've come to find with Wireshark, it can be a little tricky to remember some of the display filters. So remember, if I set a display filter, I'll just set one for ARP right now. As you can see, I've got a lot of different ARPs here on my screen. Now that would set it just for ARPs. Nice thing is if I don't wanna see ARPs anymore, I just back it out and hit enter, or I can come up to that filter bar and I can click the X and that'll get rid of my filter. How about IP? Let's go ahead and set IP. There we go. There's an IP filter. So this will include all UDP, TCP above it, uh, but I won't see anything for IPv6. Now, if I wanna set a filter for anything to and from a specific address, that's where I'm gonna go IP.adder, 
equals equals, and then I can go ahead and select the address that I want to filter for. So 192.168.0.23 uh, as an example. How about a conversation? What if everything to and from dot 23, I want to see everything to a specific server out there. Let's just say this 134 box. This is where I can start to make use of the right click filtering capabilities of Wireshark. Anytime you can, just try to right click filter because it makes it a whole lot easier. You don't have to think about a long syntax that you have to remember typing out and try to apply it and you were wrong, back it out, try it again. But rather, if I just right click this, this is where I can come down to a conversation filter. And now I can specify, do I want to filter based on the ethernet addressing in this packet? Do I want to filter based on the IP addressing in this packet? Or do I want it to be a TCP conversation? So that would take into account the port numbers on each side, that four tuple. Well, in this case, let's just say we're only interested in the IPv4 conversation between those two endpoints. Well, right there, just with right-click filtering, I was able to see my filter now. I got ip.adder equals, and then I have one address and, a packet also has to qualify as being to and from this other address. It's got to be everything to and from these guys. Okay, great. So I have a filter set for that conversation. Now another thing I can do, I can start to add things to this filter once I have a filter set. So for example, uh, if I want to filter on everything just TCP to and from these devices, that's where there's a couple ways I could do that. For one, I could come up and I could just say parenthesis parenthesis, and then I can manually do it and say add and TCP rather. So I only want TCP to and from these devices, okay? And I only have TCP to and from these devices, so obviously that's all that's left. Okay, so I wanna show you another way to do what I just did. Instead of manually typing it out with those parentheses, uh, what if I wanna add another variable to this filter that I've already built? All right, so let's just say I wanna do everything that's TCP, again, to and from these devices. If I select any packet, I can come down to the TCP header. This is where I can right click and I can go to prepare as filter. That means, hey, Wireshark, I just want to prepare a filter. I don't yet want to apply it. I just want to see how it looks and see if this is a correct filter for what I'm interested in. I'm going to say prepare as filter. I'm going to come over here and selected. What this means is I want everything to and from these two endpoints and TCP. So we see how the system now did it for me. It did the hard work for me, if you will. Uh, now every now a packet, in order to be shown, it has to be to and from these devices in that, that IP conversation, and it also has to be TCP. So this is another way that I'll build filters. You start with a single endpoint, then you start to add its conversation, then you start to add its port number or its application or protocol values, and you build out your filters that way. Now, a couple other things that I like to do with filters is I also like to progressively remove things that I can see are not involved in my troubleshooting. So I use a not filter to get rid of the static. So say, for example, in this capture, I didn't want to see the ARP traffic. So this is where I can say not, or I can actually use the word not, N-O-T, not ARP. Okay, so what that did is it just removed the ARP from my trace. Now, there might be some other things that I don't want to see. So, for example, I could say not open paren ARP or how about IPv6, just to show you how that works. So now, get rid of ARP, get rid of IPv6. Now I can start to look, okay, SSDP. I see I have a packet there, but what if that's not really related to what I'm troubleshooting? I can also add that up here. I can just say or SSDP. So one protocol, one conversation at a time, I start to simplify my trace file, and then I have less packets to comb through when I'm looking for my issue. Now, a couple other tricks that I like to show you are also, let's just say you wanted to filter for a TCP conversation, but it could be on several different ports. Let's say, for example, you're using an application that could be TCP port 80 or 443. Well, how do we set for something like this. It's this or that. So I, I come in and I say tcp.port in. So that's another variable here. It could be either 80 space 443 space 8080. And then I do my little close bracket. So that will show me all TCP conversations that are port 80, port 443, port 8080. And that's when I use that in parameter to try to filter for that. Now something nice that you also see here on my screen, you also can see TCP for IPv6. So it doesn't matter what the layer three protocol is, it'll show me if there is TCP in those packets. 
Okay, one last filter that I'd like to show you, and what I did is I just captured a few more packets. I started Wireshark, I opened up a Google site, and then I went ahead and stopped Wireshark. So another one is a string filter. So when you're looking for specific words. Now be careful because if you're dealing with encrypted applications, a lot of times the string will be encrypted. So a lot of times usernames and passwords. I know a lot of people on YouTube are saying, oh, this is how you capture usernames and passwords. Look. For good reason, a lot of that is encrypted now. So we would need to decrypt and do some digging another way. But I'd also like to show you how to do some strings that are still available, maybe with DNS or if we're looking at a TLS handshake. That's where we can still see clear text strings within Wireshark that are useful for our troubleshooting. So what I might wanna do is come up here to my display filter, and this is where I tell Wireshark at what protocol or what layer do you want to begin this filter? So for me, I usually just say frame. Frame, now this is where I have two options. I can either do contains, Google. Okay, so the whole frame, start at ethernet and look through the whole frame. I want IP, I want IPv6, I want UDP, I want TCP, it doesn't matter the protocol. As long as it's contained within ethernet, show me if you see the word Google anywhere. Well, if I come down here, I've got 111 packets that qualified for Google. And if I look over here in my clear text, I can sure enough see google.com. Now the thing about contains is it's very specific, this exact string. So contains is going to take into account the case. So uppercase, lowercase, it matters. If I wanted Google with just the large G, well then I only see that in a few of my packets. Now if I want it to be case insensitive, just show me Google whether it's uppercase, lowercase, or what have you. This is where I would not use contains. Instead, I have to use a regex type of filter, and that would use the word matches. And that's basically what's the difference between contains and matches. Contains is very specific to that string. Matches allows it to be case insensitive. Now there's a whole lot more that we can say about filtering. And as we go through our tutorial, you're gonna see me start to help you guys build different filters and apply them. But we just talked about how to set a simple protocol filter. We talked about a conversation filter, how to build out a TCP port filter, how to filter for several different TCP ports, and even text strings. So those are the basic ones that you're gonna be using when you first get started with Wireshark. There's many more to come, so stay tuned in this tutorial as you start to learn more complex display filters. Thanks for stopping by.